Hi guys, this is Eliana with Why Not Redesign. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be redoing a small hope chest or blanket chest or storage chest that is a commission piece to me. My client brought it to me. This used to be her grandmother's and she wants to refinish it in a way that I actually did it, another one that I kept for myself several years back. So that is her. Uh, inspiration picture which is amazing because it's my own piece so I really appreciate that and so we're going to be doing paint and we're going to be doing a little bit of um, upholstery with new fabric and let's get right to it So here is you guys this is the project that we'll be working on this week this is my client's uh, grandmother's piece she used it as a blanket chest back in the day in today's world we use them as storage chests it's not necessarily just for linens but the piece was in very good condition still we're going to be changing the uh, look of it and the fabric um, inside it is in great condition it's a cedar chest a lane cedar chest so we're gonna start by giving it a good clean as always. I removed the hardware and clean all of that. Um, and basically gave it a scuff sand with a 220 grit so that the paint has something to adhere to. But again, the, the piece is in very good condition. So there was nothing major that needed to be repaired or anything like that. As usual, my prep is clean, sand, clean again, and then use a primer. In this occasion, I'm gonna be using Boss by Dixie Belle, and I'm gonna be using it in the color gray. All you have to do with Boss is shake well for just a few minutes to make sure that all of the um, ingredients in the paint are mixed well, and then apply it. I love using a synthetic brush and Dixie Belle has very nice ones too. In this case, I am using just a stubby and um, it is one of my favorite brushes. But one coat of boss is all that it needs. This is not a bleeder and I won't have any issues. So that is what we're doing. I forgot that my client wanted the hardware painted as well and just blend it in. So that's, I just put it back on and gave it a coat of primer. Moving on to the gray paint, I am basically using leftover paints that I had, also Dixie Belle colors. And I mix a couple of the grays that they had and I think I use a little bit of fluff into this mix. It's, it it turned out as a beautiful gray color. Did it all the way around. The back of the paint of the piece also got got painted on. For the white, I decided to use fluff and sawmill gravy. My fluff that I am using here actually was some paint that I had left over from a project, and I totally forgot that I had it. It's almost completely dry in the in the uh, container. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it all out, mix it with the uh, sawmill gravy, and go from there. As you'll see, I got until the last drop of that dry, almost dried out paint. Uh, but again, all you have to do is just mix it well and it is good as new. I ended up making this be beautiful new color. Uh, Sawmill Gravy is a very light tan, almost white color. And by mixing it with the fluff, it made it just a beautiful beige color with some gray undertones and with the gray base or the gray first coat of paint if you will as a base for a faded white color it is perfect Looks like I did a lot of mixing on this and a lot of shaking, but it really was only like a minute. But look how smooth that paint became. Good as new. So never throw away your paint, just remix it. In the meantime, while the great paint was drying, I recovered the seat 
or the cushion of the um, piece and this is the fabric that my customer brought it is beautiful and it goes very well with the design that we're going for one of the corners had a huge gap and so this is what i normally do so here's the tip for y'all use caulking it dries fast it is paintable do make sure that you buy the one that is paintable but it dries pretty quickly and you can paint over it. it uh, the paint adheres to it very well. So yeah, just use that to fill in the gaps. Uh, a lot of times you only see those gaps after you've painted or at the very minimum you've primed your piece. So this is a trick that I use all the time. So here we go, Try, time to add on that second coat of paint. This time again is that combination of the fluff with the sawmill gravy white. So I am doing it in a sort of dry brush but wet um, type brushing. So let me explain that. Um, I got the normal amount of paint but I'm going to use it in a bigger area. So I would normally go back and try to do a coat that covers very well and doesn't let the, the gray underneath kind of show through. In this case, I am loading my brush, applying the paint, and then trying to apply the same paint throughout an entire area. So I only have one light coat that is going to sort of let the under paint see through and that is what I call a wet dry brush. I know that's weird. That's just, I just came up with that. It's not a official term. I apply the paint all throughout the piece and on the edges of the top so that when I put the upholstery on it, the seat, it doesn't show any gray or any wood under that. I am doing some dry sanding and basically I just got a rag. Um, it is wet, but it's very, I would call it very dry wet again, because I all I'm doing is just going over edges and over places where I lightly want to distress. But um, my goal is to just let that gray show through. So I'm not overly doing it in any area. Like I said, the towel was dry, so I just dampened it a little bit with a mister bottle and went back at it. But I'm going very, very lightly over the entire piece. Now it's time to apply the top coat. And this time I am super excited because I am using for the first time the new Zebra top coat brushes. And oh my gosh, I absolutely love them. This is the two and a half inch. No, I am not sponsored and no, I, I do not have a code for you. So I apologize. There are other YouTubers who can give you that or if you reach out, I'll be glad to find you one from my friends who have codes available. Um, but I can tell you that these brushes are amazing. They leave no streaks and are super, e the, the, the top coat is just super easy to apply with it. So after putting the top on this, this is what I'm talking about, you guys. Do you see that faded white on top of the gray that is showing through just right? I didn't have to use sandpaper to distress this piece, but it looks like a thick wash on it. It is beautiful. It is exactly the way that I wanted it to be. And here are the picks all staged up all ready to go pretty similar to the inspo picture 
we're never going to be able to do two pieces exactly the same but this one turned out beautifully just like the one that I did a couple of years back this is exactly what my customer wanted she picked exactly the right fabric for it it is beautiful it's all done and ready to go home tomorrow pictures have been sent to her and she loved it so I'm super excited a quick transformation on a piece that's gonna live in the 2020s and my customer is happy with so what did you guys think I think that my customer picked the right finish and the right fabric for this this fabric is absolutely beautiful and the piece looks fabulous so thank you again for being here this week don't forget to subscribe and click that notifications button so that you can see all of the videos that i post on the weekly basis and as always see you next week bye